Hey, what's up, everybody? Christian Ballard, Ballard Sports Media. Coming at you today with a college football preview. It is January 16th. Uh, we're about a week away from, you know, removed from the college football season of 2023. I know I did one of my old intros there. I just kind of picked one there. I know I like the one where my picture slides in and it's got that jazz music, but Anyway, I, I really, <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of picked one there. Anyway, hope everyone's doing great. Do us a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Really would appreciate it. It helps the channel out. We do baseball very soon. NFL playoffs going on right now. But college football is over. But is it over? Really? Not on this channel. We're going to preview teams this offseason. And I want to look at an interesting team here in Penn State. For 2024. By the way, I hope everyone's staying warm this winter. I know there's snow all across the country, some snow here in Alabama, in the greater Coleman area, where I am. And uh, it's about 21 degrees, according to what my computer is telling me. So glad I'm staying warm inside and uh, I canceled class and everything this morning. But getting on to Penn State here uh, should be a good video. Should be a good preview video here. I look at what they did last year, and it was, well, for my grandparents, a disappointment. But I think they should look at it from a perspective of improvement. I, I really believe that. And I, I think that they bring a lot back this next year. I think there's going to be some questions in the Big Ten as far as you have expansion teams. You have Oregon and Washington coming in. You have UCLA, USC. And you also have drop-off from Michigan and Ohio State who have been a thorn in the side of Penn State for quite some time. And we know all about that. They have changed the schedule up a lot this year for some teams in the Big Ten, uh, really all teams in the Big Ten and even the SEC. I mean, they're doing away with divisions practically all across college football this year, conference realignment taking full effect everywhere you look. And I look at Penn State and I say, can they handle those challenges? And honestly, I think they can. Uh, they bring a lot back this next year. Liam Clifford, Sean Clifford's uh, younger brother, is a wide receiver, going to be a redshirt junior. I think he's really, really good from my understanding, too, looking at the roster. Keandre Lambert-Smith comes back for his senior year. Uh, Jalen Reed, number one as well, uh, alongside Keandre Lambert-Smith there, wearing the number one on the jersey. He's back as a senior safety on the defense. Harrison Wallace III comes back as a redshirt junior. He's originally from Montgomery here in Alabama, the state capital. Uh, you know, I could go down the list. Nick Singleton, Abdul Carter, Zion Tracy uh, is new. They have some young guys, but they have a lot of good experience, and it all starts and revolves with the offense around Drew Aller. Drew Alar, however you want to say, I, we say Aller in this household is I've been corrected once or twice by my grandparents. Anyway, I uh, love you, Nana and Papa. <laughs> uh, but Penn State has a lot coming back, and they should be very set up for future success. I mean, you talk about the 12 team playoff coming into this year. I know we haven't talked touched on it or talked about it in our preview videos. But we previewed so far Michigan, Alabama, and Georgia. Those are three teams that could very likely make the 12-team playoff. Alabama, I know I throw them in there. Nick Saban, thank you so much. Kalen DeBoer, though, I say he could get there. It's going to be tricky. But, you know, at the same time, what he did at Washington, what he brings over to Tuscaloosa – which you can go watch that video. I talked about it a little bit. Our Alabama preview should be pretty good. But back to Penn State, that's who we're talking about today. Can they make a 12-team playoff? Can they let alone make a Big Ten title game? 
It's going to be tough, but I, I really think it's doable, and I, I really think it's favorable for them this season. You look at what they did last year in 2023, 10-3 overall, 7-2 and two in Big Ten play, and – you know, they, they won their first five games, really their first six, and their losses were Ohio State, Michigan, and then the Peach Bowl against Ole Miss. And they just struggled in that one. Ole Miss pulled away 38-25. So you want to bounce back from that. You beat teams like Rutgers, who you struggled with a little bit. You blew out Michigan State. You won a close one over Indiana. They were able to win those close games, but obviously against the tougher competition, Drew Aller and company couldn't get it done. Can they get it done this year in 2024? With that being said, uh, I don't know what that is there, but let's go ahead and pull up their 2024 schedule here because I, I really think it's interesting and I really want to take a look at it in terms of what this team can accomplish at West Virginia. This is a home and home. They go to Morgantown. Haven't looked too much into them. I might have to get in touch with Joey Foster on talking up the Mountaineers this year, what they could do in the big 12, uh, their first test like Penn state here, they play each other and that's on August 31st. That's week one. Penn State struggles on the road. They're not really used to going to Big 12 territory. So it, it could be a trap game here. But at this moment, kind of want to give them the advantage uh, when it comes to this game for Penn State. Bowling Green should be no problem. Not a bad team. Not going to knock on them. But Penn State should be better. Get an early bye week after those first two weeks. Kent State, Illinois. UCLA at USC, new teams again coming into the Big Ten this year could be interesting. Get a bye week. Everyone, because of the calendar, gets two bye weeks this year. At Wisconsin, Ohio State, Washington, at Purdue, at Minnesota, and then Maryland. And then the Big Ten title game. Notice they do not play, which I don't know how Penn State fans feel about this. They don't play a rival game in Michigan, and they don't play, uh, well, Michigan State. They don't play the Michigan schools. They play Minnesota, who formerly is in the Big Ten West. They play Maryland from the East, Ohio State from the East. They play Purdue from the West, Washington, Wisconsin. I, I could go down the list here. They're going to get a taste of sweet victory Honestly, I, I feel like this sets up pretty nicely. I think they'll beat teams like West Virginia to open. I'm going to give them a win there. I just think they're more equipped. No knock on the Mountaineers. Not a bad team. Really good team. Uh, we'll see what Neil Brown and company can do. Bowling Green, win. Kent State, win. Illinois, win. Is Brett Bellema still there? Somebody let me know. You see. UCLA should be a win, but we'll see how they fare. Haven't looked into some of these Power 5 teams. We'll look at them later on. USC could be a loss with Lincoln Riley, but Lincoln Riley defense compared to Penn State's defense and Penn State, that could be a loss. I, like I said, I want to give the at most record predictions this offseason. So, at most, you're probably looking at a Penn State win there. So, I'm going to give them a win. You get the bye week. At Wisconsin, could be hard. Ohio State, Washington, Purdue. Here's the thing. I will say the at most prediction that I'm looking at is 11 wins for Penn State. I, I'm really looking into that. I like that for them. I think it this season could favor – the Nittany Lions in ways. Like I said, you don't play the Michigan schools. So if you had Michigan on this schedule, that's a loss right there. I, um, I, I look at this, and you're looking at losses to Ohio State and Washington, but that's not what I'm calling, is it? I'm going to say the at most prediction here 
is 11 and 1. At most, they could hit 11 and 1. They're going to drop a game somewhere for sure. I think you're looking at a floor if they really mess up, they're looking at 9 and 3. But they should be able to run through some of these teams. And, and uh, ju they're just better. They're better than Purdue. They're better than Minnesota and Maryland. They're better than most likely USC this year. Kent State, Illinois, UCLA. You've got to beat those teams, right? UCLA and USC are not going to be ready for the Big Ten in year one. Just get that out of the way. By the way, the spring game, we'll talk about spring games when April rolls around. They get theirs on April 13th. Anyway, they, they're they going to be better than these teams that you see on their schedule. You say, well, they just can't get it done against Ohio State. They can't get it done against so-and-so. You can't – well, uh, Washington. I honestly – I, I think that's the game to drop. I, I, I mean, Kyle McCord's gone from Ohio State, last I checked. I know Michael Penix has gone from Washington. We most likely assume he's going to go pro. Kalen DeBoer left, and, and now Washington has to figure it all out again. I know, but I, I think by that point in the season, like they're not going to have a huge drop-off with the Huskies. What if Washington comes to town and pulls a upset? I just... Back-to-back -back games there, Ohio State of Washington. You're coming off Wisconsin. I'll get to this. I would not be surprised if Penn State is a surprise team that goes 12-0 this year. I really believe that because they've waited too long for this. And you have quarterback questions a little bit with uh, what Ohio State's going to do. They got guys going to the draft. Michigan is – hold on, I'm looking out, I'm looking out, I'm looking out. Nowhere to be found on your schedule. Nowhere on the schedule do you play the Michigan teams. There is no – I mean, you got Illinois, you got Ohio State at home. That's good. That's really good. I also uh, – what other East teams are they not playing? Illinois, uh, Indiana, they're playing Illinois. Indiana's not on there. So, and, and they they held off Ohio State a little bit last year. They only lost by eight points. If they're getting better and they're at home, why would they not? I mean, they're due for one at some point. It's been eight years since 2016. When Grant Haley, it, it's amazing Penn State uh, didn't have the best. Well, they won the Big Ten, right? So they had the best season, but they weren't supposed to. So, and, and that's when they did it was when they're not supposed to. I don't know if they're supposed to do it this year, honestly. Is anybody going to pick them? I know we've been saying that for years, but at some point they have to get it done. I think they have the talent to do it. Joe Lar comes back. Uh, you, you got all these like Harrison Wallace, Liam Clifford, Kondrick Lambert, Lambert Smith. They have the pieces to do it and get the job done to where they can make a run for a Big Ten title. It's going to be tough. I, I'm not ruling that out. It's it's not easy, and it's a tougher schedule than what they faced before with. Washington or whoever coming in and USC, it's going to be hard and it's going to get tougher going forward. But that defense, whew, it's going to be one of the best in the Big Ten. It might be the best in the Big Ten. Defense wins championships. I know we're still kind of in this offensive, uh, you know, school or school, well, offensive style of football. You know, everyone wants to throw the ball. It's all about quarterback play and everything. I think Georgia has shown in recent years you can still do it. Not that they didn't have the offense. I mean, they torched TCU a year ago. But they have shown that you need some defense or that you can still use defense. And I think Penn State gets it together. 
And I think that they shock a lot of people this year in 2024. I know what you want to say about James Franklin. I know what you want to say. He can't get it done. He's this, he's that, blah, blah. You said the same thing about Jim Harbaugh, and now look where he is. It took him a while, right? Took him, what, three, four years to finally beat Ohio State? And when it happened, actually, it might have even took him five, right? Now you look at Penn State. Now they're out here. They can't get it done until this year. I'm calling it. Penn State will make the 12-team playoff. They will beat Ohio State. They will beat everyone they're supposed to. They will only drop to Washington. And they will win the Big Ten. Call it. Put money on it and take it to the bank. I love you guys. God bless you all. Let's see. Uh, let's see a great off season here on Ballard Sports Media, and then let's get ready for next football season. We got plenty more to come here at Ballard Sports Media. Hope you guys checked out the Ballard Blitz uh, new podcast, football style, college football, uh, just talking life. Honestly, fun stuff. If you want to be a guest on there, let me know and we'll talk it up. Let me know what you want to talk about, too. I want to blow that thing up and uh, get it going. So, anyway, love you guys. God bless. Have a great day and an even better week. Peace out.